Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Rose Valley Winery committed to making quality wines from locally grown cold hardy grapes. Rose Valley Winery on Beechwood Road, Rose City. Remembering good times and great food, Frank and Lisa invite you to Tim Lizzie's in Bio for a blast back to the 50s and 60s when food was made from scratch, including home ground Angus burgers. A full menu of great food and good memories await you at the new Tim Lizzie's of Bio. Hi, welcome to Michigan Magazine. I'm Barry Stutzman. Glad you could join us. This week in Michigan Magazine, we stop by the new location of TriPoint Connections, a new non-denominational Christian outreach organization with a coffee shop feel. We follow the journeys of TriPoint the past three years as they hop from one community to another, seeking a permanent location. Well, now I, I think they found their home in West Branch at the old West Town Plaza. We stopped by during their big open house grand opening late last year and found increasing enthusiasm by followers and the curious. Then we sit down with Michigan author B. David Warner at Canterbury Village near Lake Orion to talk about one of his latest releases of Adventure with a Michigan Theme. Regionally factual, this amazing piece of fiction will scare you. What are the possibilities this could happen? The book is called Deadlock and it explores U.S. national security through the vulnerability of the Sioux Locks, a real page turner. So stay tuned, it's all coming up on this edition of Michigan Magazine. Program support provided by Thunder Bay Resort, offering a winter getaway where sleigh bells echo through dense hardwood forests. Guests can experience a search for the majestic and elusive elk viewed from horse-drawn sleighs. Then return to a welcomed fire, gourmet dinner, and tales of the day shared over a glass of wine from nearby Stony Acres Winery. USA Today calls the sleigh ride at Thunder Bay Resort one of ten great places to ride into a courier and Ives. Located in Hillman on Michigan's Sunrise Side. It's been written, home is where the heart is. No truer words have been said when it comes to an organization called TriPoint Connections. TriPoint is the nonprofit, non-denominational Christian organization dedicated to creating an informal, relaxed atmosphere for worship and fellowship. It literally has been a journey to find a permanent home for the group based in northeastern Michigan. Over the past few years, Michigan Magazine has followed TriPoint's journey from Rose City to Lupton, and now to their new location in West Branch. The new location is just off I-75's exit 215, west of the West Branch city limits in a small commercial plaza. On the very west end, you'll now find the entrance to TriPoint, with more space and freedom to become an independent entity providing for a complete family experience. Michigan Magazine attended its grand opening open house late last year, where we witnessed an impressive outpouring of community support of citizens and church leaders of different denominations. TriPoint Pastor T.J. Witherall greeted arriving guests with enthusiasm and quickly shared his excitement with Michigan Magazine about TriPoint's new permanent home and future. Well, it's uh, in on the west side of West Branch, so it's not um, on Hamburger Hill, it's on the opposite side. Uh, it's in the old plaza, they used to call it West Side Plaza, and so um, we just decided that uh, we felt like there was a big need here. We're not competing with other churches. Uh, there's over 14,000 people that don't go to church at all. So, so we're just trying to reach those that aren't in church. And you know, even though there's a big church right next door, it's not our goal to to take people from other churches. We're basically just trying to get the word out, let people know that we're here. You know, we're going to be involved a lot in the community. Um, you know, just trying to to reach out in any possible way we can and just build relationships that's our goal we have uh, soup and chili inside and uh, we're just inviting people to come from five to six uh, you know they don't have to stay for the six o'clock service but they are welcome to uh, just to come and just see what we're all about and those kinds of things 6 so. p.m. on Saturday nights is our service times uh, we'll have other events that will be posted around the community that we will do throughout the week our ultimate goal is to run a coffee shop out of here someday and and do that kind of thing. Oh, it's just an exciting day, a new chance to uh, invest in the lives of the people of Ogemaw County and uh, 
have a chance to just uh, maybe take a look at God in a new way. And to come to a new location, it's just kind of like a breath of fresh air and, uh, and it's just something that was, I, I guess, the direction you took was more or less, you know, kind of a divine intervention more or less. From the beginning, yeah. Uh, you know, our last location, uh, another church was gracious enough to allow us to share their facility, but um, it didn't allow us to do the things that we wanted to do in terms of vision, more of a coffee house and a more relaxed atmosphere. So this is a, a great day that, that fits our, our dreams. You got a lot of wide open spaces. I see you guys have been really busy working, putting it all together. And of course, you invite everybody out here, no matter what the denomination, for fellowship and, and just to meet and greet and have a good time. Oh, absolutely. It's a non-denominational uh, church and uh, our biggest concern is they get connected to God in a, in a real and genuine way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, coffee, soup, uh, a chance to uh, just sit around tables instead of sit on uh, hard pews and uh, just a little different environment. It's a very nice environment. Well, congratulations on this grand opening and uh, God bless and we look for many good things to come out of this new location. Appreciate it, we do too. Thank you. It's been a great journey, uh, as Pastor Mike has said. It's uh, been a challenge for all of us. It's a new uh, adventure for me, uh, coming out of being a school teacher and then into the ministry. Uh, but we have a great lead pastor who's uh, showing us the way and it's really based on his uh, his vision of, of uh, a lot of church plants in many rural areas. And we'd like to say that we connect God, people, and community. And that's what we're hoping to be as a, as a focus center. Uh, it is a casual atmosphere. Uh, jean shorts, uh, t-shirts, whatever, flip-flops are, are uh, very welcome. Uh, a little bit of contemporary music uh, and uh, bringing out the word and message. Uh, uh, it's a uh, almost a coffee shop type environment where mm -hmm. you're sitting around tables and uh, and uh, interacting with people as opposed to lining up in rows and all of that kind of thing uh, in a more traditional church setting and that's also why it's on Saturday nights uh, uh, to give people an opportunity who uh, like to sleep in or have other activities going on Sunday mornings and mm -hmm. so uh, that's what we're trying to do with the uh, uh, the new plant. Um, as far as the music as Pastor Mike was saying it is a contemporary uh, praise and worship uh, with uh, fairly modern live worship team that we have. We invite everybody. We, we, uh, we enjoy having uh, from the youngest to the oldest, and we do have a children's church and a nursery that's available also. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by Jerry's Joint at West Branch, and with the best burgers in town. Jerry's has a full menu, but when you order the burgers steaming hot, they're made the way you like it. Stack time, made to order, add fries, and you've got a complete meal. Jerry's Joint of West Branch, home of the best burgers in town. Discount Foods, downtown Mayo. Find national name brand foods and merchandise at sharply discounted prices. Shop the smart way and please the family without breaking the budget. Discount Foods, downtown Mayo. Clemex Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Clemex Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle Line on display at Clemex on Mapes Road, Mile. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. What began as a crazy idea among nine police officers to purchase the historic Clare City Bakery quickly became an international phenomenon. Carrying on a Michigan tradition with delicious donuts, pies, pastries, breads, original coffee, and more. Plus a full menu at the new adjacent Traffic Stop Diner. Downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts. From the pen of Michigan author B. David Warner comes a suspense thriller. Deadlock, a novel filled with possibilities, as the back of the book synopsis tells us. During World War II, a tiny town in northern Michigan holds the key to Allied victory. Reporter Kate Brennan narrowly avoids a mob hit and travels to Sault Ste. Marie to work for her uncle's newspaper. Investigating a murder, she runs headlong into a Nazi plot to destroy the Sioux locks and stop Allied war production cold. It may sound far-fetched, but the chilling aspect of those circumstances comes to light when you realize that B. David Warner, the author, takes his research in creating his novels to the extreme. In other words, the plots are very possible. It could happen. 
If you're familiar with David's other work, Freeze Frame, you know how the settings and story are intricately entwined to draw the reader in, especially the Michigander. B. David Warner knows what he's writing about. In a recent visit with David at Canterbury Village in Clarkston, he explained that in Deadlock, the characters and facts are ones his fans can relate to. You have to be true to your reader. People know they're reading fiction, but you want to make it as, as factual as you can. Uh, I think you have to be true to your reader. And, and so we did an awful lot of research beforehand just to let people know this takes place during World War II at the Sioux. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of people don't know is the role that the Sioux played uh, during World War II. Ninety percent of the iron ore that came from the, the upper uh, northern ore fields mm -hmm. had to go through the Sioux locks, 90 percent of it, to get to our defense plants. And if the Germans had taken out the locks, it would have disrupted our, our steel mills and it would have shut down every munitions plant, tank plant uh, in, in the country, probably. And for that reason, there were 7,300 troops stationed Whoa. at Sault Ste. Marie during that. World War II. Many well, people probably don't. Well, that's right. Yeah, they, they, they played an important part that people don't really know a lot about. Right. Uh, there were about 15,000 people in the Sioux mm. then, so they, they almost uh, increased the population by 50 percent with 7,300 troops, if mm -hmm. my math is right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about deadlock, I mean, the, the concept. And, and sure. It's, it's, it's in that time period. Sure. Uh, kind of well, I, it, it's based on the fact that we did a lot of research, uh, but I thought it's kind of a what if story. Uh, there's a, uh, just briefly, there's a, there's a, I call it James Patterson meets Eye of the Needle. If you're oh, familiar okay, with Eye yeah. of the Needle, sure. the, the German yeah. spy in okay. uh, Britain during that time. There's a German spy uh, on the loose in Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, he's killed, he's killing people, but the, his end game is to destroy the locks and stop that 90% of the iron ore and change the course of World War II. So, uh, in my lead character is a young woman by the name of Kate Brennan, who is a reporter for the old Detroit Times. And she uh, has to leave town, the mob is after her, she almost bumped off in the first couple mm -hmm. chapters. And she goes to Sault Ste. Marie where she works for her uncle's newspaper. And a, a good friend is killed, and investigating the murder, she runs headlong into this Nazi plot to take out the locks and change the course of World War II. It's not as far-fetched as many people think. I mean, well, it could have, yes, that's right. Yeah. It didn't happen, but it could have. Yeah, yeah, and it surprises me, too, as you reveal in your book, that uh, pretty much our, you know, our intelligence was aware of uh, the vulnerability of the locks. Sure. Uh, what was the situation as you did your research of the actual uh, locks and the precautions that they did take? Well, they had, uh, obviously, anti-aircraft weaponry mm -hmm. there. And they had these huge barrage balloons. They had about 50 of them. Now, barrage balloons were kind of like the J.L. Hudson's floats without the fun. You know, not floats, but the you know the uh, the balloons. They were about 30 or 40 feet long, but they were gray. They were pretty dingy, and they were suspended about a thousand feet overhead by these two-inch thick cables. They kept them in place. Uh, and not always. They sometimes broke loose and they found one as far south as Bidlin after it <laughs> broke loose, kind of like the, uh, the penguin that, that broke loose from the jail Hudson okay, great. <laughs> parade. So anyway, uh, there were about 55 of them, as I say, and they, they were there be to prevent German dive bombers from coming in and strafing the locks. They would have, uh, the, the steel cables would have cut any plane to pieces. The fear was uh, that the Germans might bring uh, pieces of planes and components by submarine and, and put them together up in northern Canada where only the caribou and elk would see them mm -hmm. and then fly them down and, and, and strafe the locks. That was the, that was mm. the fear. Wow. Yeah. I mean, as I, as, as I talk to you, it's, it's amazing that I see your eyes light up. I mean, they're like, <laughs> you, you, you're thinking of the story and the scenario and, and what's going to happen next. I mean, you're, you, your wheels are always turning, aren't they? Well, they are, you know, and I hope, I hope that people uh, light up when they read the book because yeah. I think, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a thriller. Now, when I say thriller, it's sort of a mystery thriller. I've said mm -hmm. thriller to some people. They say, oh, that's, that's scary, that's Stephen yeah. King. No, yeah. that's not a thriller. It's something that keeps you on the edge of your seat. And it's written like James Patterson does in short paragraphs or short mm -hmm. chapters so that uh, there's, there's a, at the end of a chapter, there's, there's something that happens that makes you want to read the next chapter. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one fellow, uh, and I wrote Freeze Frame, my first novel, the same way, and, and a fellow uh, talked to me later, and he was, uh, he was uh, 
mad at me, not really, but he said, uh, my wife was mad at me because I kept her up until three o'clock. I couldn't put the book down. <laughs> Every time I turn a page and finish a chapter, well, the next chapter is only two, three pages yeah, long, so, yeah. <laughs> you intentionally do that. Huh? Well, that's right, sure, that's right. sure. You, you've learned a lot from doing books and uh, the, the two novels you had. Let's go back a little bit to find out a little bit more about the David Warner. I mean, sure. how in the world did you get into this, this situation where you have that bug to write? And, well, oh, everybody wants to do the great American novel. Sure, 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 and I always did. I, as a matter of fact, in, in our senior class uh, magazine, a million years ago. Everybody, one of the things besides your pet peeve was what do you want to do in life? And I said I wanted to be a writer. And I think of all the people there, 400 people in my graduating class, I may be the only one that, that actually did, you know, what I, my, uh, my viewpoints didn't change. I still wanted right. to be a writer. So I, I went to Michigan State where I, uh, I squeezed uh, uh, four years of education into three terms. Uh, it was uh, Johnson's, uh, Nixon's, and Ford's. Okay. And, and, <laughs> I got you. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, studied advertising and journalism, uh, came out, went to work for Ross Roy, uh, an adverti large advertising okay. agency, and, and I spent uh, 40 years in the, in the business as a writer before I, I thought, well, geez, you know, I've got this book in, in the back of my mind. Uh, and nobody's going to write it if I don't, so I better sit down and write it. And so I started to write, and that was Freeze Frame, and it's set in the fast-paced advertising business in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And I started to write it, and, and uh, I did what I tell young writers in the advertising business not to do, and that is to act like every word is going to be in, engraved in bronze. It's not. Just mm -hmm. relax and let it flow. And, but I wasn't doing that, and, and so I'd write and rewrite and rewrite, and I just wasn't satisfied with what mm -hmm. I was doing. But I congratulated myself on the good taste to know that what I was doing wasn't very good. <laughs> so yeah. so um, anyway, I, I, uh, I finally uh, put, it, put it away. And it had, the, the, the main character was a young woman, and the reason was a friend of mine had gone out previously to Hollywood who was trying to sell a script idea to a producer. The producer said, I'm not going to buy your script, but I'll buy anything you've got that stars a young woman whose life is constantly in danger. So I'm no dummy, you know, so my main character is going to be a young woman whose life is constantly in danger. So I sat down to write, as I say, and, and it didn't, wasn't coming out. So I put that book away and I started my second book, also with a young woman protagonist, and, just as a lark, I, uh, I decided to write it in the first person, just as if I were narrating it. And it just flowed. And, and so I thought, boy, this is the way to... So I went back and I rewrote my first book, Freeze Frame, with a, a, uh, from the standpoint of a, of a young woman narrating this thing, and it, and it just flowed. And, you know, writers talk about finding their voice. I found my voice, and it's a 32-year-old woman. Is that something? <laughs> yeah. something? I think that's the key to your success. Isn't yeah. it? Well, I think, you know, when you're an author, when you're a writer, when you're writing a scene, and I call them scenes, not chapters, because there, there's something mm -hmm. that goes on. You, you know the start, you know the finish, you know what you want to accomplish. And you've got three or four characters maybe all talking with each other. So you put yourself, like an actor, you, you put yourself into each character. So whether the character is male or female, you have to think about what what's that response going to be to the last the last line so you, you write that response now what's the next person's response to that and that's to me anyway that's uh, the way I write you know I, I think I tell people who want to write that the most daunting thing is the first page of the first chapter but don't don't start there uh, if you've got a plot in mind you've got scenes as I as I mentioned in your mind too so sit down and write uh, write those scenes Mm -hmm. uh, and then in the end, you can you can connect them all together. I, I like move, I like books that start out with a bang and and uh, with some action, you know. And that's what that's what uh, Deadlock does, you know. There's a woman being held hostage inside her home by a gunman, and and he's got a gun pointed at her at her head, you know. And how do you know what's going to happen? I mean, Deadlock is on the in the on the bookshelves. It's on Amazon.com. Where can they get it? I have a website. Right. Marlene and I work together. Marlene, okay. my wife. Uh, it's www. B is in Bernard or B is in Boy David Warner dot com, mm -hmm. and and uh, they can read the first two chapters of Deadlock uh, okay. on, on that. Uh, they can also and, and and both Deadlock and and Freeze Frame are available on Kindle too for oh, Kindle okay. readers. Okay. I think through uh, the Michigan Magazine right. website mm -hmm. you, you have books sure. there and they can That's go in there yes. and find it. Yeah. David, it's been a pleasure to visit with you, and I urge everybody to take a look at Deadlock at our website or your website, or we hope to get you up to the Michigan Magazine Museum, do a book signing. Oh, I love that. This I love that, Barry. Yeah. It'd be a lot of fun, and you can meet the author, but I urge everybody to pick up a copy because you're going to find all facts that you didn't know intermingled with a lot of suspense and yeah, thrill, yeah. you know. 
I appreciate you taking time at this beautiful place, just not too yeah. far from your home. Is That's it? right. It's yeah. not. It's yeah. not. Yeah. Well, a pleasure, and we look forward to the next one, David. Great. Thank, thank you, Barry. Thank Thanks you. very much. Announcing the Michigan Paddle Sports Directory, your one-stop internet connection at michiganpaddlesports.com. It's now possible to explore Michigan's extensive waterways like never before. Michigan Paddle Sports Directory is a comprehensive directory of canoe and kayak rentals and liveries throughout the entire state of Michigan. At michiganpaddlesports.com, you'll find a great paddling route, outfitter, store, school, rental shop, or tour guide. Michigan's great waterways are waiting for you. Make it an adventure worth remembering by first visiting michiganpaddlesports.com. Well, that's all the time we've got for this edition of Michigan Magazine. So glad you could join us. Hope you enjoy us next week for another edition as we hit those Michigan back roads to discover Michigan off the beaten path. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Get your immunizations now at Rose City Drug, your one-stop pharmacy, home health care, and medical supply outlet. Offering a variety of on-site immunizations. Walk-ins are, of course, welcome. Call now for more information. Hale Hardware, your do it center at Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. The Art of Amalia Jonas is at the Art Store near Lupton, Michigan. Stop by her gallery or visit her online to purchase that perfect masterpiece or sign up for private lessons. Begin your journey in the world of art by capturing the inspiration around you under the personal direction of Amalia Jonas at the Art Store. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pull. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pull. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts.